Hi, I'm Alex, and this is Tank Tested. Today, I'm at Aquashella. This is before the show opens. And today, I want to share with you guys how I set up an aquascan. I just have some river rocks, and I'm going to get some plants from H2O Plants in a few hours. Uh, at the end of this video, I'll give you a promo code so you can get a discount on their plants. But uh, I have no plan, and uh, I'm using stones that are not traditionally used for nano aquascaping. So this should be an adventure. All right, so this is the back of the tank. I put a privacy film on the back panel of the tank. It's a cling film, you just apply water and then it sticks with static electricity. I think it's a really great way to block distractions in your scape. Plus, if you light that backdrop, you can create a nice vibrant white background so that your scape really pops. Now I'm adding about half the fluval stratum I have access to. My goal is to build up the back of the tank so that I've got enough material that I can place rocks in, and also create some vertical height. I don't want to have any stratum at the front of the tank, and as you'll see later in this scape, there's almost nothing that hits the front of the glass. I'm using just a little scraper to bring as much of that stratum to the back of the tank as possible. And now I'm placing my first stone of the scape. This is the largest stone I have, and it'll make a nice centerpiece for my aquascape. It's river stone, and so is every other stone in this tank. Because I'm using river stone, I want to lean into that aesthetic and build a more natural aquascape. Something that feels like I just took a chunk of a stream and put it in a box. The second stone, I think, makes a nice compliment, and you can start to see what I'm thinking with my aquascape. I want to have a, a central passageway. I want to guide the eye down the scape. But I'm still trying to figure that out, and it will change over time. I added this third stone to really create weight at the front of the tank so that the central stone doesn't feel quite so isolated. This stone has a nice strong vertical front, which means that I can put it very close to the front of the tank. And as I continue escape, I'm going to move it closer and closer and closer. It's really easy to give too much space at the front of your tank. Your escape can come all the way up to the front of the glass. This is the fourth stone I'm using, and again, these are river stones. It takes a lot of work to find good stones. I think that's an overlooked step when you're aquascaping. You don't want to be scaping with just random rocks you find. You want to take the time to find the best rocks so that you have the best chance of building a beautiful scape. Now with this fifth stone, I'm really showing you that I have no plan when I'm setting up this aquascape. Uh, I initially settle in this location, which I actually think is a really strong placement. Again, it grounds that central pillar and it makes it look a little bit more natural. This next stone I laid in it just doesn't make a lot of sense there. I'm going to get rid of it. Now I wanted to try adding another big stone into this gate, and it did not <laughs> go great. I knocked over almost every stone, pretty much completely destroyed my scape setup. I wish that I had taken some time to just totally reset, but instead I tried to trudge on, and I think that's to the detriment of the scape, because every stone from here on has a little bit worse placement than it had before, and my stones are starting to get a little bit too close together, in my opinion. I think this is a pretty common experience when you're setting up a scape. It's really easy to go two steps beyond what you originally intended, and you end up with a cluttered scape that just feels a little bit over-designed. That's, that's what I have here, but there are elements that I like, and the final scape isn't that different. I think I'm using the strongest face of each stone facing the front of the tank, and now it's just a process of finessing the scape. At this point I know something's not working, so I'm adding more stones to try to solve the problem. Like this central stone that I ultimately removed because it just didn't work. I also tried putting another stone in the background to suggest a little bit more depth. I think if this tank was just maybe an inch deeper, that would work a little bit better. But I think it's okay, it's not a disaster. Here I'm testing out a rock placement. There's nothing to support it right now, but I want to try to build a triangular scape where that back corner is really built out. So to do that, I'm going to add a little bit more stratum. Now that I've got some of my rocks in place, I can use that stratum to fill in my back corner. When you're working with such a small tank, river stones can feel way too dominant. They can overwhelm the tank with those big, broad, smooth surfaces. But if you find rocks that have lots of little crevices and cracks, they can really bring your tank to life. 
And moving your light around gives a dramatically different feel to your scape. So that's something to think about when you're lighting your tank. The angle of the light can drastically change the feel of your scape. Ultimately, I think this is a pretty good look. There are still a couple final elements to the hardscape I need to add, but this is pretty much the final version of the large stones. If you think this is a little bit too overwhelming or it's kind of blurring together, keep in mind that when you add plants to escape, a lot of that stonework will hide behind the plants. From the side, you can see how I'm trying to create guiding lines and canyons from that angle as well. That's always a goal of mine, especially with a cube tank where neither side is particularly dominant. So this is kind of my ideal viewing angle. And I really like the depth that I've created here. This should feel kind of like a little biotope, a river scene. This isn't simulating a giant canyon, it's simulating what I see when I snorkel in my local streams. The next step for me is to cover up all that fluval stratum. It just doesn't look super natural. So instead I'm using a sand and gravel blend that's not commercially available. This is actually some substrate that a friend of mine collected from a local quarry operation. And I think it's really beautiful because it mixes both the fine, delicate sand with some larger pebbles and rocks that you would normally see in a riverbed. Again, I'm covering up all the fluval stratum. Eventually, when I'll plant plants, they can dig into the substrate and get that nutrients, but I don't want to see it when I look at the tank. I want to just see something that looks natural. To smooth out the substrate, I also use a clean paintbrush. This is a really great way to move substrate around. You're just kind of smoothing it out so that it looks more natural, like what a waterway would actually look like. In a slow-moving stream, that sand is going to be completely smooth. Next, I'm adding a few stones that will help fill in the holes and ground the larger stones that I've added to this tank. I want to make this feel like it's a real stream where stones are exposed, peeking up from the sand. Try to bury the edges of your stones so they're emerging out of the substrate rather than laying on top. So much of the final step of aquascaping is blurring the edges and making things feel natural. Finally, I fill in the back corner with sand so that I've completely hidden the fluval stratum from view. This is my final hardscape. I'm pretty proud of it, and I think it looks natural. The only thing I wish I could change is opening up that space between my main stone and my secondary stone. That canyon just shrunk more and more as I was adding stones, and if I had a few more hours, I would have expanded that out just a little bit, so that gap could be an inch wide rather than a half inch wide. Cut to uh, about two days later. The judging has happened, and uh, I did not win, but that's okay. Uh, there's some really great tanks this year. Uh, what I did do was finish planting the scape, and I want to show you what it ended up looking like, and tell you how you can get plants yourself. See, H2O Plants sponsored this aquarium. They gave me uh, plants to work with. And if you would like plants yourself from H2O Plants, you can get them. And enter the promo code Tank Tested at checkout for uh, a chunk of money off of your first purchase with H2O Plants. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description. Now, here's my tank. So this is my final scape. Unfortunately, I ran out of time during the planting process and wasn't able to film it but hopefully this gives you an idea of what I was going for. In this tank, I have java fern built up in the rock system. I started at the front of the tank with normal java fern, and at the back of the tank, I used narrow leaf java fern. That creates the illusion of depth. On the right-hand side and in some of the crevices, I used micro chain sword. It has a similar color and leaf structure to the java fern, but it's planted directly in the fluval stratum. Together, I hope it creates the illusion of a lush riverbank with water flowing across these stones. In this tank, I think a school of white clouds would look great. Their streamlined bodies would enforce the idea of it being a stream system, and the red of their fins would really stand out against the green of the plants and the browns and yellows in the rock. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell so you're notified every time I upload a video.
In the bottom left is another video that I'm proud of, and on the right are my Patreon supporters. Without them, videos like this wouldn't be possible. If you want to support me, consider joining my Patreon. Thanks so much, have a great day.